as an oncologist, though, I think it goes back to, number one, understanding the social support system of the patient, though. So who's responsible for assisting the patient currently? Are they living with a spouse? Um, what is their activity level? What is their so so social situation? And, and the reality is that religious factors can come into play. Ethnicity can come into play. But you need to be aware of it. And you need to be able to understand that people are going to be of varying degrees of education and different, multiple different types of ethnicities. Um, it's very, very important to really talk when you meet the patient, number one, make sure that they are comfortable with you talking to their family members. In my case, I like to make sure that the patient is really our number one priority. And um, if he's comfortable with me sharing the information with their family members, I think that that is fantastic because then everyone's on the same page. My concern is when you have family members that don't want you to tell the patient that they have cancer um, and they do not speak English. Um, and so it, it complicates things quite a bit. However, in that setting, I think it's lucrative to have an interpreter present. I never use a family member as an interpreter because misinformation can easily be provided. And then you end up in a very difficult position down the road when you think this whole time the patient has had a complete understanding of his disease and why you're treating him with the various chemotherapies that you are and, and what, what approach you're utilizing. And so it's very, very, very important, I think, to make sure that for a patient that does not speak English as their primary language, you need to have an interpreter present. And it's very simple. You can even utilize that dial-in service that's a low fee, if, um, and I think that's very reasonable. It's best to have a real-life um, interpreter present, but that's not always the case um, for, for all physicians. As a newly diagnosed patient, I would highly encourage you not to investigate the internet on a uh, regular extent and also not uh, go into so multiple social media sites because you don't want to be misled. You want to receive as much accurate information as possible. And I always tell other patients that, you know, please make sure that they're discussing the same type of disease, they're um, talking about the same type of chemotherapy. Um, because if you have a completely different disease, they're going to be receiving com very, very different types of chemotherapy with very, very different side effects. And so it doesn't necessarily apply to you. And, and then it causes unnecessary stress and angst. Uh, and that is not what we want for you. It, it's best to, if you're going to utilize the internet or social media, try to find someone that you can identify with that's basically um, some, ideally within your age group that's on the same therapy with the same type of malignancy.